good morning so day two of vlogmas Ugh, not much going on at all today y'all it still feels really weird waking up in a crash pad like it really shouldn't feel that different but it does <laughs> um i'm just gonna brush my teeth wash my face and See if crew services decides to come. I'm on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times, we'll be chilling and happy. Been a good, good time Doesn't matter if the snow is falling Or the wind blows in the rain is pouring It will always be Christmas in my heart But this year I want to hang out with my friends and family Making angels in the sand Bed is made. We have to make sure we make our beds every morning or at least before we leave the crash pad. Um... Oh, honestly, I'm probably not going anywhere today because today is day two of being on reserve. Um, and it's 8 a.m. I haven't checked the board yet, so I'm about to go do that. But I mean, no, I did. I did. After I rolled over this morning and did my morning prayers, I checked the board. There's nothing on there. So... Yeah, let's see what I can get into today. Okay, so for those of you that might ask, yes, technically I'm still keto, or at least in my mind, I'm still on the keto diet. Thanksgiving definitely threw me for a loop. Um, Y'all know I like to eat. So, um, I went home for Thanksgiving. I did end up taking Thanksgiving off. What a blessing. Year two, and I had Thanksgiving off. Last year, I did not have thanksgiving off or did i oh you know what last year i got in from a trip thanksgiving morning and i went to connecticut to spend thanksgiving with auntie pat and my cousin christine christine that passed away um a few months ago that's what i did last year thanksgiving um but this year i ended up dropping a trip I had a four day trip and I was actually gonna spend Thanksgiving with my cousin Gavin and them in Fort Lauderdale. But I was just like, you know what? Christmas is really iffy this year if I'll be able to get it off or not. So at least let me spend one of these holidays with my family. So I did end up going home. My stepdaddy made gumbo and I was not about to eat, you know, like miss out on gumbo. Not me, not Alexi Nicole. No, no, no. So anyways, so now I'm just getting back into the habits cause I was eating gumbo red velvet cake, German chocolate cake, uh, I made some macaroni and cheese the good way. Like, I was eating everything. So it really has been an adjustment for me to get back into the keto lifestyle. But, you know, mentally I still, I love it and I still want to do it. I just need to take the time to go grocery shopping because literally as soon as Thanksgiving ended, I came back here to New York to start transitioning this move and I just haven't had the time to sit down and grocery shop and do what I'm supposed to do. So anyways, y'all, um, but I do still really enjoy drinking apple cider vinegar in the morning because, you know, some people don't, some people think it doesn't do anything. For me, I really feel the difference in like during, throughout the day, I don't feel like it's bloated when I eat food and you know, I just feel like my stomach stays flat or thin or it feels emptier. That's what the apple cider vinegar does for me. You know, and then it also says that it has, you know, good effects for your skin and all of that as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to take a little shot of this, pour it in some water. Um, and even though I still haven't technically been eating um, keto friendly foods, I still, I still have been fasting. So I still don't really eat until usually about 12 or later and I just simply think that's just because I'm not hungry in the mornings like my body has just suggested so much that I'm still not hungry it's not because I'm trying to I just don't really feel the urge to eat until those times so 
we'll drink this and I'll probably be good for a little while. And if y'all are wondering, yes, I'm here at the crash pad by myself. Um, so I think I told you there's a total of seven people that live here and it's a co-ed crash pad. So it's three gentlemen and oh, it's only six people that live here. Yeah. As of right now, there's one empty bed. So three guys, three ladies, two older ladies. They're at least 50 and above. The two young guys, the one you met yesterday, Corey, another young gentleman, Lloyd, and then another um, more mature gentleman. His name is Carl. Um, and they all actually work for American Airlines. I'm the only one over here that works for my near and dear. So it's kind of nice, you know, just seeing how their whole system works. And I just talked to them about, you know, the differences between the companies and things that they don't like and, you know, things they wish they had. And it's just really cool getting to, you know, see how other airlines operate. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm sitting here checking Flicka, my, our, our, I don't know how to just, Flicka. It's everything that has to do with scheduling. It shows you trips that are in open time, things that you can pick up what's on the board, you know, what they may actually call you for, if it's anything available today. Um, yeah, so there's literally nothing on the board for today. And honestly, y'all, I'm very tempted to go home because, oh, I haven't told y'all, um, today, next week, Saturday, Fawn and I are going to Aruba. So I want to go home and I'm supposed to stay here until the 4th because I'm on reserve until the 4th. Today's the 1st. Um, but I kind of want to go home and drop stuff off and at least be able to pick up a trip on the 5th or 6th before I leave to go to Aruba. Um, so I'm very tempted to just like fly home on my reserve days and pray that they don't call me, which I probably shouldn't play with my life like that because I always get called on reserve. Um, especially today being I'm still good for four days today. So once one o'clock hits, I'm gonna decide like, do I wanna go home um, today and like just kind of transition some of this stuff that I have here that's taking up so much space and just leave it at home and then come back? Or should I just like wait until tomorrow or should I just wait my reserve days out? I don't know, but yeah, December has been a hard month as far as like trying to work and get trips because senior mamas and senior papas you know everybody wants to work the month of december obviously it's the holidays you're spending a lot of money so you know you don't really have the flexibility to be dropping your hours like that because you need to collect a coin for little junior babies like me it's difficult to um get trips um because i don't you know, I have 71 hours and I like to fly 115 hours a month. So, yeah, that's just, this that paycheck's not going to cut it for me. <laughs> so, I'm trying to see what magic I can make work. But, anyways, y'all, if anything exciting happens with the day, I'll give y'all an update later. So, just a little update. It's 11 a.m. now. Um, I feel so accomplished because I was trying to figure out how to do this editing thing with my videos and I failed at it miserably yesterday. So today, I just figured it out. So I'm happy, happy, happy about that. Um, this YouTube thing, if y'all don't know, like I was never, never into none of this before I started vlogging. So I've literally been learning as I go. Like just, I go on YouTube, I search how to do something, and then I just try to figure it out. Anyways, um... So I'm still on reserve. I still have two more hours. And the board is blank. Like, when I say blank, let me show you. Blank, 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 blankety blank. Like, no open time. And granted, today is the last day of the month. It's the last day of the month. So the only thing that would be on there is for today. But there's nothing. <laughs> and then for December, this is where you go to like pick up trips. Like, look, these are the only dates that trips are available for right now. And, uh, nah. <laughs> like, 
this is it so so yeah like this is inside look to my schedule and what i'm always saying i'm on flicker like stalking waiting for like a trip to drop um but so tomorrow is the first day of the month the work day so i'm on reserve zrv i don't know what the zrv stands for because in regular chords it's rsv which clearly stands for reserve so Oh, Z21 reserve. I don't know. I, I don't know. But anyways, look at all these days that I'm off. Like, off, y'all. The 5th through the 17th, I literally have nothing going on. And there's only trips on the board from the 22nd to the 31st as of right now. And as y'all can see, the 18th, I scooped up a trip. I PTO'd this because I'm having friends miss with my friends in Houston and then as of right now I'm supposed to be in San Francisco for Christmas and then I go back on reserve at the end of the month so I say the struggle is real it is so real and then just to answer a question that someone just posted on vlogmas day one I'm glad y'all are enjoying vlogmas day one um you know I tend to forget that everybody hasn't been watching my vlogs since I started because I got a lot of ride or dies y'all been dying and riding for a long time um and I use terminologies that my new subbies don't know so mint and core I was mentioning that in vlog miss day one mint and core are what we call our cabins on the um on the plane at my company airline near and dear to my heart um so mint is what you would consider business class or first class it's really business class and then core is what we call our economy cabin but um, my company does not like to use terminologies like that for the longest time we didn't even have a business class they like to refer to us as the egalitarian airline meaning everybody is on the same you know level nobody's more special than another um, that was like a really big thing when my airline was created. So when they did actually create the mint cabin, it was like a huge decision to have separate cabins. So anyways, they came up with the name mint. I was told the story when I did mint training last year on why that was the name, but I don't remember the, I don't remember anymore. And then core is just core. So there you go. That's mint and core business and economy. So I figured y'all, excuse my hair i really need to get my life together i just keep looking at it and it's just i haven't combed it in like two days actually no i'm lying i'm lying i shampooed and conditioned it yesterday but then i put on a hat immediately after that <clears throat> so it's so it's nappy um but anyways what i figured was since i'm just sitting here not doing anything right now i might as well just answer the questions that y'all are asking on this video so I answered the first one and that was from who uh, that was from Nicole Stacy about um mint and core. Um so Cortez Core, that's funny. Cortez Core, not your your name's not funny, just core and core. Anyways, Cortez says <laughs> Can't wait for the hiring pool to open today. Do you ever venture into the city often? I know I would hate to leave my car at home. Um, hiring pool as of right now opens in 53 minutes. I hope you're ready. Um, do you ever venture into the city often? Not often. I mean, depending on your definition of often would probably be weekly, monthly, and no, I don't. I do go in. I have gone in. I've vlogged it whenever I do go, but y'all know I am just not a New York City girl. Um yes leaving your car at home i'm from houston texas i've been driving around my whole life you know and that's just how i'm used to getting around transportation so i mean i've i know how to take the train and the buses and things like that here but it's just not my favorite thing to do so i mean unless it's just something like i really want to do or like go try a restaurant or go see a friend or family like i really don't have a need to just like go into the city um and if so okay you are applying because you're saying the hiring pool if you do come out here um the people that i know that have tried to bring their cars either take them right back home 
because parking, especially if you're gonna live here in this area, flight attendant town, Q Gardens, AKA Q Gardens, there's nowhere to park. Um, or most people just leave their car at the airport, and which is kind of silly. So yeah, that's that. Um, and then there was another one. This is a very interesting question. I've never been asked this. This is from Pam. Hi, Pam. Pam says, hi, Alexia. Missed your videos. I am a fan. Thank you. <laughs> That's just so weird. The, the word fan is really weird to me because anytime I meet somebody in person, I'm getting sidetracked, y'all. Sorry. But anytime I meet somebody in person that watches videos or, you know, and they say that I'm a fan, I'm just like, I'm just a regular girl. Like, I don't have no fans. So that word just always tickles me. Um... I watch a lot of YouTube black flight attendants. <laughs> okay, black girl magic. I fly at least six times a year, but what I'm finding is that none of the flights that I have taken ever have black flight attendants. Is this a small group of people? I know you may not be able to speak on this, but what is the estimated ratio? Um, I'll speak on it. Um, I really just think it all depends on what airline you're flying what destination you may be going to. The company that's near and dear to my heart, um, we actually are very, very diverse here. And I can say m maybe, I don't, I don't know, 80% of the flights that I worked always have a, pers a, a color of person on them, including myself, so an extra person. Um, and that's all colors. So not so, but you're asking specifically about black people. But just here, like, I've never seen an airline so diverse. Probably other than like Emirates or something, an international airline. Um, but yeah, we we roll deep over here. Um, I know Delta has a ton of black flight attendants here as well. Um, I mean, they all all the air. I, I don't know. It's kind of a hard question to ask because. It's almost like I get the question about, oh my gosh, I never really see male flight attendants, you know, and I just think it all depends on how often you fly as well, because as y'all know, I've, I've had all male crews plenty of times and I love it. All male crews and me. So three males and me. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's just really kind of like a hit or miss thing where you're going, um, and what airline you're flying. Cause the crash pad that I live at, it's actually all black people and all the other five people that live here are American airline flight attendants. So, yeah, I mean, maybe if you just fly a little more often or if you switch up the airline you're flying to or like a different destination or something, because I'm sure if you flew on Delta out of um, ATL Atlanta, you'll definitely see some black flight attendants there for sure. Um, Southwest has a whole bunch. I mean, we're here, you know, just, just look a little harder, you'll see us. <laughs> okay, so next question, Jarvis says, Hey love, how long is the reserve period for the company that's near and dear to your heart? LOL, I've got an interview this month. Okay, well congratulations on the coming up interview. Reserve period is right now honestly looking to be about two years at JFK. Um, And that's just all, and that can always change because... When I initially got hired, they were saying it was one year and then it's kind of slowed down. Um, so I think last year they ended up hiring less than what they had, they thought they were going to. And then I think for this next upcoming year, I think the number of flight attendants they want to hire is about 800. So you always say it kind of depends on how many people are kind of coming in. But even still, what it more depends on is just flight time, flight hours that the company has and that they're giving to a specific base is really how reserve works. So just because people are coming in, which is good, that's going to boost your seniority, which is always good. But you can still be sitting reserve with those new people still. Like if there's no more flight hours, then there's still just going to be people sitting in reserve. So right now, I would definitely say a minimum of a year and a half to two at JFK. Maybe at Boston, it might be a little less. Um, but actually, all the new reserves that we're getting, we have one class graduating in two weeks. Um, 
and then I think more classes starting like at the top of January and all those classes are going to Boston nobody's coming to JFK so <sighs> I'm a little concerned but anywhere from two years to I think Long Beach uh, Long Beach has the longest reserve period uh I can't even guesstimate. I'ma easily say five plus years at Long Beach, maybe more. And then Florida and uh, Florida, Fort Lauderdale and Orlando are somewhere in between then. So another question just popped up. I'm in the middle of watching Let's Journey's Vlogmas Day One. Her son, she calls him the dude, is so cute. If y'all don't watch Let's Journey, go watch her. She, um, she has really good content on her, her vlogs as well. Um, but Troy says, welcome back. We've missed you. Missed y'all too. I am applying today. Question, what is the usual time after probation that you can apply to switch bases? Um, you don't actually, you don't have to wait. Um, probation. We don't call it probation. We call it something else that I can't remember the term. <laughs> um, but the probation term is six months, but you can actually, um, bid for a transfer the first month out of training. So in training, you get awarded your your base. You bid for it, but they give you whatever is available. So usually JFK or Boston. Um, sometimes even Fort Lauderdale. I think they did a few Fort Lauderdales earlier this year, which was surprising. But anyways, um, so once you get awarded your first base, they send out the email every month to do a... A, uh, a bid for base transfer and basically you just apply for it until you get awarded it and then once you do get awarded that base transfer you have to stay in that base for a minimum of three months and then you can apply to go to another base if you want to or bid back to go to the previous base or whatever but anytime you transfer a base you have to stay there for a minimum of three months but there is no waiting period to do your initial transfer the boredom became so unbearable it's my reserve block is over it's like 2 30 ish i guess uh, this way. and I just have got to get out the, the house. So I haven't worked out in a few days because moving and all of that just kept me busy. And I'm sore from moving, walking down four flights of stairs with heavy things. So I didn't technically work out, but I burned a lot of calories. But I'm about to just go for a nice brisk walk through the park before it gets like pitch black at 4.30 p.m. y'all well the day is winding down it is now 4 15 i just did a cute little three and a half mile walk slash jog had to get my body some movement because i've been in this crash pad for the past two days without like really doing anything i forgot to start the video with the reason for the season bible verse of the day so let me go ahead and do that now um today is philippians 2 8 through 10 and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. So, amen to that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end out the vlog here. Thank you for watching Vlogmas Day 2. Until tomorrow, make sure you subscribe, like, and share.